So now let's let's just kind of get into the text and let's make some uh, observations about uh, the chapter. Look at verse one. Verse one begins by saying, this is the book of the genealogy of Adam, the book of the genealogy of Adam. The only other time that phrase is used is in Matthew chapter one, verse one where we have the book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ. And so there's a connection made between these two genealogies that we have here in Genesis 5 and in Matthew 1. There's a connection made between Adam and Jesus Christ, which makes sense because Jesus is called the last Adam. And the Bible tells us that you are born into the first Adam's family, and then you're born again into the family of the last Adam, Jesus Christ. So there's two families here. So there's two genealogies. There's the first Adam and the last Adam or Jesus Christ. Look at verse three. It says, and Adam lived one hundred and thirty years and begot a son. Notice in his own likeness. After his image. And named him Seth. If you remember from chapter one, Adam was created in the image of God. But here we see Seth was created in the image of Adam. Adam's descendants are made in the image of both God and in the image of Adam. In other words, Adam's descendants, including us, inherited Adam's fallen nature. We are all sinners like Adam. We're all made in Adam's image. We're a chip off the old block, just like Grandpa Adam. And we have his sin nature. We're sinners just like Adam. You know, in Romans chapter 5, verse 12, it says, When Adam sinned, sin entered the world, and death through Adam's sin, and death spread to everyone because everyone sins. What that means is we all inherited the sin gene from Adam. And the Bible tells us that the wages of sin is death. And so we all die. Hebrews tells us that we each have an appointment with death. Every one of us. Hebrews says it is appointed unto man once to die. And then comes the judgment. We have an appointment with death and an appointment with the judgment of God. The good news is Jesus Christ came and he died for us in our place as our substitute to conquer death for us, to defeat the grave and to give us everlasting life. That's the good news. First Corinthians 15, 22 says, just as everyone dies because we all belong to Adam, everyone who belongs to Christ will be given new life. In Adam, we die in Christ. We are made alive. That's the good news of the gospel. Jesus put it this way in the gospel of John. I'll just read it to you. But in John chapter 11, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Jesus asked the question. Though we may die, we shall live. We have everlasting life, resurrected life through Jesus Christ. As you look through this chapter and this genealogy, we see a sad refrain repeated with each person. And that sad refrain is, and he died. Look at what it says about Adam in verse five. It says, so all the days that Adam lived were 930 years and he died. We see with Seth in verse eight, and he died, and he died, and he died. That's the story of every generation. Every every generation was born in the likeness of Adam and lived and, and died in the likeness of Adam. After the fall, death reigned over mankind and death continues to reign over mankind. And he died is still the sad refrain for every person, for all of mankind. But the resurrection of Jesus Christ gives us hope, living hope 
beyond death. The sad refrain ends with the empty tomb. When Jesus Christ rose from the grave, death was defeated for us. Death no longer has the final word in our story. Death has been swallowed by the victory that Jesus Christ provided for us through his death and resurrection. Now, skip down with me to verse 21. Again, I'm just highlighting some observations here for us from this genealogy. Verse 21 says, And Enoch lived 65 years, and he begot Methuselah. <laughs> After he begot Methuselah, look what it says. Enoch walked with God 300 years and had sons and daughters. And so all the days of Enoch were 365 years. And Enoch walked with God and he was not. For God took him. Enoch walked with God and God took him to heaven. Enoch is the only person in this genealogy who didn't experience death. He, he's the only one that doesn't have that sad refrain. And he died, which gives us, you know, a glimmer of hope here as death is reigning over mankind in this chapter. And he died and he died. But wait, here's here's someone who walked with God and God took him to heaven. He, he escaped death. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5 says of Enoch, by faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Enoch walked with God. He pleased God. By faith. And then God translated him to heaven or God transferred him. To heaven. Enoch is is an Old Testament picture of the rapture of the church. Enoch was taken away to heaven before God's judgment was poured out on the earth in the flood. The church will be taken away to heaven before God sends tribulation upon the earth at the end of the age. And what is sometimes referred to as a pre tribulation rapture. Of the church. And we have a picture of that here with Enoch being transferred to heaven. Now, we're, we're told here in the verses we just read that Enoch named his son Methuselah. What a name, right? Methuselah. <laughs> the name Methuselah, listen to this the name Methuselah means when he dies, it shall be sent. When he dies, it shall be sent. Methuselah's name was a prophecy about the flood. When he dies, it shall be sent. What shall be sent? The flood. God's judgment. And according to the chronology in Genesis 5, the year that Methuselah died was the same year the flood came. Now, verse 27 tells us that Methuselah lived a total of 969 years, making him the longest living person who ever lived. His long life was a sign of God's mercy. Of God's mercy, his name warned people that judgment would come when he died and Methuselah lived longer than any other human being in history. That's God's mercy. That's God's mercy. God delayed his judgment so people would have the opportunity to repent and turn to God for salvation. You know, today, some people scoff at or mock the return of Jesus Christ. And they say, hey, you Christians say Jesus Christ is coming again. Well, well, where is he? Why hasn't he come yet? What, what's he what's he waiting for? Well, he's waiting so that people have the opportunity to repent of their sins and put their faith in Jesus Christ and be forgiven and be saved and receive eternal life through faith in Jesus Christ. That's what they're waiting for. That's what God's waiting for. In Second uh, Peter, chapter three, Peter writes, the Lord isn't really being slow about his promise, as some people think. No, he is being patient for your sake. 
He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. God is patiently waiting for sinners to repent of their sin and get right with God because God doesn't want to destroy anyone. God doesn't take pleasure in the death of the wicked. God doesn't take pleasure in judging sinners. He'd much rather people repent of their sins and spend eternity with him in heaven than to go to hell for all eternity and spend eternity apart from him. After Methuselah, you have Lamech. Methuselah had a son named Lamech in verse 28. And Lamech lived 182 years. Lamech had a son. And he called his name Noah. Saying this one will comfort us concerning our work and the toil of our hands because of the ground which the Lord has cursed. And after he begot Noah, Lamech lived 595 years and had sons and daughters. So that would be the brothers and sisters of Noah. Who were not on the ark. They they didn't believe Noah. And so all the days of Lamech were 777 years and he died. And Noah was 500 years old and Noah begot Shem, Ham and Japheth. So now we're going to follow the line of Noah going forward. Now, going back up uh, just to verse 28 with with Lamech, um, if you do the math or, or, or you can skip the math and just take my word for it, who wants to really do math, right? Uh, but Adam lived until the 56th year of Lamech, Noah's father. And so Adam lived all the way into the lifetime of Noah's father. So so Adam could have told Noah's father all about the garden and living in the garden with God and the serpent and the temptation and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and the fall and being cast out and all of that. He could have told all of that story to Noah's father. And then Noah's father could have passed those stories on to his son, Noah. So there's really just one person between the life of Adam and the life of Noah, even though we're we're covering more than a thousand years of history here. Noah's father and Adam They overlapped. And so there's really just one person between the life of Adam and and the life of Noah. I don't know if you've ever thought about this before, but if you think about it uh, between us and Jesus, there's really only, you know, 20 people, maybe 20, 22 people, 25 people. You know, if you think about a generation and people live 70, 80, 90 years or more uh, and you go back. There's really only about 20 to 25 people that are between us and Jesus Christ. It's not really that many. So Lamech named Noah. Noah, verse 29 tells us why. He called his name Noah, saying, this one will comfort us concerning our work and the toil of our hands because of the ground which the Lord had cursed, going back to the curse that was upon Adam. And and you you get a sense here of Lamech, you know, he's toiling. Mankind is toiling under the curse and wanting a savior, wanting a deliverer to come and deliver mankind from the curse of the fall. The name Noah means comfort or rest. Lamech thought his son Noah was the one, the promised seed of Genesis 3.15 that would bring salvation to the world and give people rest from all their toil. But Noah wasn't the one. Noah wasn't the one. He wasn't the savior that Lamech looked for. Lamech was really longing for Jesus. He didn't realize that. He didn't know that. But he was longing for Jesus. 
Jesus is the seed of the woman. Jesus is the one who gives us rest from our toil. He's the one who gives us rest for our soul. That's who that's who Lamech wanted. That's who he was longing for. Jesus, the Bible says Jesus is the desire of all nations. Jesus is the one the world is looking for right now. Jesus is the one the world really desires right now. The world doesn't realize that. You know, the, the world is, is looking for a leader. The world's looking for a vaccine and all of these things, looking for someone to fix every, you know, the world is looking for Jesus. He's the desire of all nations. He is the one that we're all longing for. He's the one that we're all looking for. We're all longing for the rest and comfort that's only found in him and no one else. Now, you may not know that. You may not know that Jesus is what you're looking for, but he is what you're looking for. You, you, may, you may be looking to other things or other people or looking for security in something other than Jesus Christ. You may, you may be looking elsewhere for answers, but what you're really looking for is Jesus Christ. He's the lover of your soul. He's the only one that can satisfy. He's the only one that can give you a peace in your heart and your mind. A peace, the Bible says, that passes all understanding. He's the only one that can give you rest for your soul. In fact, Jesus invites us to come to him when we're weary and burdened and heavy laden and, and take his yoke upon us. And what that means is to make him Lord, to put him in charge. And he says, if you do that, he'll take our burdens, he'll take our uh, uh, the things that weigh us down and he will give us rest for our soul. He's the one. He's the one that we're longing for. He's the one that we're looking for. I think now more than ever for the believer in Jesus Christ, we, we look at things going on in the world and things going on in our own nation and and the difficulties that we're facing. And and I, I know for for the believer, our, our prayer is come quickly, Lord Jesus. We're, we're not looking to anyone or anything else. We're looking to you. You're the one we long for. You're the one we need. Jesus Christ.